Hey boys and girls, welcome again back to uh, Monroe Live. Today, as you can see, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the battery. Uh, ben and I are gonna walk through this and give you um, a little bit of information on this. And then we're also gonna go over and look at the battery control module a little bit and show you the difference between the Y and the Plaid. Now, um, you can see I got a stick in one hand and I got my other hand in my, um, in my pocket and uh, Ben and I will be suited for action. Um, this thing is at around 90% uh, state of charge, so uh, we aren't gonna take too many chances and we don't wanna put on the gauntlets. So the first thing we're gonna talk a little bit about is this stuff right here. <clears throat> this is the mica shield that, the, that Tesla's put in place and this is the first time we've seen it, correct? First time that Tesla's put it on, the Y yeah. and the three did not have it on top. So this is 15 kilos or about 30, 34 pounds. And, um, and that adds quite a bit of weight, but um, they must, there must be some reason for doing it. Uh, Tesla doesn't usually uh, just arbitrarily toss stuff at, um, at the product. But I will tell you that this um, bolts directly up into a steel frame. So I don't, I don't know what that's gonna actually do for them. Um, have you got any ideas or? There's fire mitigation requirements that are coming out specifically in China right now. They have the strictest requirements. So there's a lot of companies that are starting to put more in there than what they used to. So putting the mica in uh, is what Tesla's doing right now. And this is what, um, what Sabic was looking to do with their, with their Stamax. plastics, yeah, with, their, with their Stamax, with their fire retardant. Yeah, I, I think I'd rather do the Stamax than mica. <clears throat> MICA requires mining, and we've already said in the past that uh, with Stamax or materials like that, these fire retardant plastics, uh, we, we're, I mean, we're still saddled uh, sucking uh, mm -hmm. oil out of the ground. Um, I'd rather see that work than having to uh, go in and uh, mine for MICA. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to remove this little section right here. And uh, when we come back, we're going to disappear and then come back uh, so we don't have to have gauntlets on the whole time. So stay tuned. Okay, so we've removed that piece of mica that was here. And um, now I'm going to have uh, Ben talk to us a little bit about um, the structure associated with the, uh, the lower part of the uh, battery case. And the only thing that I'm really surprised at is uh, these right here. These, um, these are called concentric welds invented by General Motors. When was that? That was uh, back in 2012. They patented those we that welding technique, and that's used to <clears throat> extend the life of the weld machines, the weld tips. So you get about three times the life out of it. You're not changing out the tips in your machines when you're welding aluminum to aluminum plates. It also gives you a bigger nugget. That, mm -hmm. that nugget is um, infinitely stronger than just a, a normal uh, tip to anvil. Um, uh, type of uh, weld, weld nugget. And one of the other things that Tesla's done is they've increased their sill structure uh, compared to the <coughs> Model 3 and Model Y that we took a look at. You can see that that concentric weld holds on another plate here that's used to give some more rigidity to this, uh, to this battery pack. So when you, when you look from the bottom, it does come back and in, in about six inches. So they're they're getting some structure um, all the way width into where the battery pack starts. Well, the other thing I noticed too is that this seems to be a bigger gap. Um, I think it's around Scr 25 millimeters or something. Well, that's correct. Uh, again, for impact, so they have some room for the battery housing to flex and deform inward before it starts to hit anything with the battery pack, the battery modules. I also noticed too, Tesla likes castings, and, um, and we've got a casting here that separates the different, these are the modules, by the way, this way, um, and there's five of these modules separated by these castings. Can you give us a little detail on that? Uh, so they have four different castings um, <clears throat> in the middle in between the modules. They have two different styles that you can see here. The inboard two are a little bit different, and that's for uh, different mounting techniques that they need to be able to hold the battery pack up to the body in white. And then they have some different castings on the outside. Uh, this is 
they're using some castings um, to reduce some part counts, being able to put everything into one piece, all the features that they need for mounting the various components. And then we, we can kind of get into um, all of the, the different um, connectors. This is a different system than we've ever seen, uh, than I've ever seen with Tesla. So um, why don't you dive into that? And you can see too how they're connected to the to the piping. So yeah, it's this is the cool. thermal the thermal management system. You have an input and an output. At, this would be the front of the vehicle. So it comes back down and runs down the side of the battery pack. And when you look in, um, there are connectors for each one of these that are, uh, we're, we're really interested to see those when we get them out. They look to be heavily machined uh, to be able to properly allow the flow of the coolant into the battery modules. So these, these bad, <coughs> battery cells are, are vertical. So you can see the little round impressions. So we're assuming they're gonna use the same um, uh, micro channel extrusions that they used in the past. Um, because but yeah. this gives them better cooling because there's more, more area and a smaller amount of mm -hmm. heat coming out of the, uh, the, the smaller batteries there. Right, these are still the 18650s, <coughs> the smaller batteries. They weren't the, uh, the larger, yeah. uh, larger batteries we were hoping for. But what, like Sandy was just saying, it makes sense from a performance standpoint, they're gonna be producing a lot more heat with this vehicle when you're going out and putting it in track mode. So they use the smaller batteries to be able to wick the heat away easier. Yeah. One of the things that I thought was really kind of interesting um, was the vents. So um, this is one of the vents taken to pieces and you can, um, you can spot them. I, there uh, is, this one came out from, one the, this one came out from yeah, the position right here. The other one over and there's there. another one that is over here. <clears throat> So when you take them out, um, this is basically from the bottom. This would come in from the top and then the two snap together. What's interesting about these, I think, is the fact that these, um, these wafers um, expand um, if there's humidity. So when the humidity expands these wafers, then what happens is it releases, um, it releases the plunger and allows uh, some of that air that's trapped inside to dissipate. So really and truly, you don't want to build up any pressure inside of the, um, inside the battery case, and this is what keeps it from, from getting, uh, from getting uh, uh, hot. So, or sorry, not getting hot, but, but getting um, uh, filled with pressure. These are the pressure relief valves. So, um, we've got that. What's and next there are, on? there are a couple on the other side as well. And something that Tesla's done is they've put a cap on these. You can see right in here that green cap uh, is covering up another one of those pink valves. And that's to protect the wire harnesses that they have running down this side of the battery pack. Where the opposite side had the cooling and the thermal management systems. This has the battery management system, so they're monitoring all of their cells along the side here, and then there's their, uh, for each of their modules, and then there's connections that run back up to the main battery management board at the front of the vehicle. The other thing that's kind of cool is that they're using the, um, the castings as a support uh, member for the, for the caps that go over, which isolate the cables from everything else. And on the other side, <clears throat> they've done the same thing um, to do uh, to do a good job at uh, capturing the uh, the coolant um, the coolant pipes. So again, you, you get into a situation with Tesla where they they always seem to be uh, trying to get more out of um, like more than one function out of a part, which I think is a, a really good uh, a really good process. And then something else with those uh, silicone cast pieces that you were just pointing out, Sandy, is we think that they are designed kind of like a ship is. If you get a leak in a thermal system in one section, yeah. it will keep it from mitigating down and it'll all leak out at the, at the valve that's in yeah. that area. So it doesn't, uh, yeah. won't flood the entire battery pack, but it'll just yeah. keep it in one section. Yeah, so bilges uh, on ships sometimes will have... Um, 
a similar um, one-way valve that'll push mm -hmm. stuff out but won't allow the seawater back in. So that's a good deal. Why don't we talk a little bit about this connection because um, this is something that we were surprised at. So this was the, this is the same <coughs> connector that was on the Model Y. Um, because the Model S has their battery management system in the front and their um, onboard charger and DC to DC converter is all located in the front of the battery pack, they need to run from their power input, which Sandy, mm -hmm. if you wanna yeah. walk all the way down yeah. there, <clears throat> you can see it's over by where Sandy is, where this connects on the other side. You have the power in coming here, and then there's a connection that Sandy is pointing at now right now. that will run, this cable will run all the way down the exterior portion of the battery pack. Um, so they've had to drastically lengthen uh, this connection on the Model S as compared to the Model Y because of the location of the battery input and the location of the DC to DC converter and onboard charger at the front of the pack versus the rear. Part of that was in the Model S. They've changed the architecture of the Model S battery pack from originally designed. The onboard charger and DC to DC converter used to be separate from the battery pack. Uh, they've been able to bring that in. This space used to be another pair of modules. The old Model S had 16 modules in it instead of the five here, so they were much smaller modules and there were two in the front stacked on top of each other. So we had a penthouse here before, but it was all filled with modules. Now there's a penthouse that's filled with the onboard charger. So they've been able to reduce the, number, the space required for uh, their cells. And as we're talking about that, they've actually increased the number of cells when compared to a previous Model S. I'm gonna grab my notes here because I won't remember the number that it was. So in an old 85 kilowatt uh, battery pack that the Model S had, they used to have uh, 7,104 cells in it and it took up more space. Like I said, it was up here in the front and it stacked higher. They've gotten more efficient and in less space now have 7,920 cells. So they now have about 100 kilowatts uh, in here, as well as some of the DC to DC converter and onboard charge controller where they used to only have 85 kilowatts. Um, so, so they've also, that's, that's a, gone into their efficiency as well of their battery pack. Um, again, they used to be at 157 watt hours per kilogram. Uh, so that's just a measure, measurement of how efficient you are with all the weight and all the ancillary equipment that's going in here with the cells. Now they're up to 181.5 watt hours per, per kilogram. So they're able to get more, uh, more charge in less weight. Yeah. So we pretty much touched on everything, I think, except for the, um, except for the silicone that, uh, that we're using around here to seal everything off. And um, we've, we see it along the outside edges, but we're also seeing it patched on top of each one of these connectors, or sorry, each one of these um, um, <clears throat> castings. So um, do you want to give us a little detail on that, Ben? Correct. This is structural adhesive that was ran <clears throat> around the entire outside and all down these castings. You can see the mica is still actually on top of these castings. It ripped off uh, a little bit of the mica sheet on each one of them. Um, it is something that is very rigid, very hard to get to get off of there. Uh, again, making a more structural battery pack, working towards that. So is there anything else we need to touch on? I think we're all good for in here. Okay, well, let's walk outside to the... Uh, um, to the... Um, onboard, onboard charger, charger and DC and, to DC converter. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're out of the danger zone, this uh, uh, black thing in back of us. And we're out here on one of the tables to discuss the, um, um, the, the difference between the Model Y and the, uh, and the Tesla uh, Plaid. And, and we're gonna start right here, right here on these covers. Now you can see that they're about the same size and uh, the whole patterns match, which is back to the Tesla version of you know, backward compatibility. 
but <clears throat> this one maybe haven't used the same bolts uh, bolts uh, 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 configuration and uh, and hole configuration but you can see instantly that this cover does not look like the plaid cover and um, and if we flip them over um, you can see that that little that little vent that they had over here has been changed and you can see it's much smaller and this one's totally plastic whereas this one is a uh, steel encasing a plastic form so um, it's kind of unusual um, we didn't expect to see that um, yep. the other thing that you'll notice too is that even though these are the same height when you get into um, when we get into the product, you'll start to see that the heights are not the same. Yeah. So um, we've pulled out. I'll just uh, finish off here. I, we pulled out the screws, and this is for the uh, Model Y, and you can see how long they are. And then we pulled the screws out of um, out of this box here, which is on the Model X plaid or Model S plaid. And you can see they're much, much smaller. And with that, I'll get out of the way and let Ben talk about the really exciting stuff that, um, that we found when we started taking this thing to pieces. So let's start with right. the uh, let's yeah, start with and the We're gonna uh, start why. just looking at the whole thing right now from an architectural oh. standpoint. These two boards look very similar. Uh, that's something that Tesla's doing on their Model S to help, or their Model S here, to help reduce the cost as they're using similar components in a lot of different places across multiple vehicles. Um, allows them to buy hundreds of thousands, not 10,000 of a part. Uh, it helps keep the cost down, which is a good thing uh, that they're able to do. But as they're doing this, they are making improvements as they go along. Um, as Sandy said, this was the Model Y that we tore down, which we purchased in early 2020. And then we received the Model S in late 21. So there could have been some changes on here that we haven't seen yet, and these could be across the board, or they could just be um, changes specific to the Model S. So the first thing that Sandy was pointing at a little bit with the fasteners was the, uh, the filter board here and the filter board height. So as you can see, the extrusion part of this is much taller in the Model Y here versus the Model S. And if you flip it over, you'll see there's actually quite a bit of difference on the bottom side. So they have, in the Model Y, they had two coils that they used in here. Uh, and the pink stuff is a potting compound uh, that's used to help with thermal transfer. They've reduced that down to one. And not only did they reduce the number, they reduced the size. Uh, these are about three eighths of an inch, excuse me, these, this is about three eighths of an inch smaller in diameter than what it was on the Model Y. So there's quite a bit of weight difference in these as well. So they've cut out a lot of weight in reducing this, uh, in reducing the coil count and cut out the height as well. So they're able to shorten the screws, do some different things with the housing cover as well. So do we, uh, do we know what the, um, what the weight differential is between these two boards? I know uh, the we have, we have added we about 16 kilograms uh, overall we're at about 1.2 <clears throat> kilograms from this entire setup versus this entire setup of savings going from the y to the three so they've reduced enough throughout it to be able to get quite a bit of savings so for the folks who aren't kilogram kind of oriented um, that would be about three pounds so that'll mm -hmm. put things into perspective a little less than three pounds one yep. thing that um, i asked about uh, not being a sparky was why was this black and these blue? And this is a good example of uh, Tesla uh, choosing different suppliers. And that's the only reason. Mm -hmm. Everything else about these, uh, these coils are the same. Correct, so they, these, the capacitors, capacitors that they had, sorry, yep, the capacitors coils. that they had are <clears throat> the same, uh, have the same uh, capabilities of the current capacitors. They've changed their supplier. The, um, the other thing we noticed too, are if you look here, you can see the potting compound doesn't go around. Every, it, this one here is covered. And every little bit that they can find to take any little bit of weight or cost out, they seem to have, uh, have, have, have mm -hmm. focused on. Yep, and the, there are a few places where they added it in. Uh, they did add a few more fuses in. Uh, don't, know, don't know for sure why yet, but they have an extra... 
But see, they, they plan fuses. for it. They yep. see these two uh, sockets here. Um, they're made for a fuse that never went in. So uh, amazing to me. So they, they were planning for the requirements back when they were doing the Model 3 and the Model Y, and they just now needed them, or there was another situation that we have, just haven't had the chance mm. to see. Um, and then going a little bit further, the transformers, there are four transformers before the capacitors now, where they used to only have two. Mm. So they're, they're doing some stuff with the power that's going through here that's allowed them to do something a little different closer to the end of the DC to DC converter that we'll take a look at. Well, one of the things that I noticed too is this is uh, one coil, and this is the coil that's taken its place. Maybe you can give us a little background on that. And that's what I was uh, referencing that they might be able to. So this inductor um, is a, like you're saying, is a coil design. They have the, a pair of wires that are wrapped around uh, the ring going down both sides. And on this one, they have two wires that are just going through the middle of the, of the coil on this inductor. So this is a much more cost effective uh, way of doing it. And again, back to the weight discussion, this one is a much lighter design. Um, and what they've, what they've actually done for the requirements to be able to allow them to do this, we're not for sure. Thinking the transformers back at the beginning has something to do with it though. Hmm. Um, we missed this one part, so maybe mm -hmm. you can uh, talk a little bit about that. You can see that this sits flat. So this yep. component has one a brother right underneath it. So. Yep, they are both, it is, was mounted to the bottom of the Y as well. Um, just have not taken it off of the S yet. So it's just kind of sitting up here to show uh, <clears throat> the same parts on the two different vehicles. And then when we uh, get to the end here, we have two ferrite cores that were in, uh, in the Model Y. They've been able to reduce that to one ferrite core over here in the Model S. So I'm not sure if that's going to show through, but if you can see it, this side looks bright white, and this one has the ferrite core in it. Um, uh, that's the only, we haven't taken it too far down. We'll be taking into, digging into these, these uh, electronic modules a little later, but that's how you can tell uh, what's going on. So, um, why don't you give us the... Uh, yep, and... So this is just a few examples of the improvements that Tesla's made um, in their boards. They've made improvements throughout the whole vehicle, improvements in the battery packs as well. And what that's all for is to be able to increase their range uh, and increase their efficiency. So when Tesla first started making a Model S back in 2013, uh, they were getting 89 MPGE for their vehicle, which at the time was was really good, but they've gone and it's, we're 10 years later now, and the current Model S that is being released is up to 120 MPGE. So they've gone and increased their efficiency by about 30% over that, those 10 years. So they can take the same amount of power and that allows you to go further. They've increased their range, again, in the same type of fashion from 265 miles up to 348 miles uh, uh, currently on their vehicles. On the, that's on the standard Model S. The Plaid is a little bit uh, different because it's got its own, its own unique uh, powertrain. So it's a little bit less efficient. It's getting about 101 MPGE. So we'll, we'll, post, the, uh, we'll post a little um, uh, PowerPoint or something so you can have a look at these numbers as they got better and better over the years. But but the big thing for, the big takeaway for me is that they, they've designed two basically different kinds of products. One, um, you know, a supercar sedan mm -hmm. and, a, um, and the other one's a, um, basically a, a kind of an SUV. Mm -hmm. And yet the components that they're using to drive these two fairly different products look an awful lot the same. <clears throat> the also th the thing that that I like is they they design for scalability. The fuses are something that's obvious. Some of these other things that we're looking at here though aren't quite as obvious and we're going to be diving into that a little bit more in the future to find out what 
what things they've done in here to make it scalable from an, old, an older product, the Model Y, to the newer product, the, uh, the Plaid. The other thing that I like is the backward compatibility. <clears throat> All engineers should try and figure out how they can get to market faster. And one way to do that is to have some sort of common, common product that's been um, efficiently analyzed and uh, those components reduced down to the bare minimum that you're gonna need for right now. Then you can take that same product and move it into another, another, uh, another uh, uh, version of that car or better yet, another vehicle entirely. Now, in the past, unfortunately, the car companies have um, missed the boat on that. They have made standards that weren't really as effective as a, or as efficient as they should have been. And so consequently, it actually added weight and cost and usually efficient inefficiencies in the product. This strategy seems to be long. Mm -hmm. This is a long, deep strategy that, that Tesla's got and it's made them it's going to make them a huge amount of money. All in all, um, again, it's hard to stop, you know, patting Tesla on the back. Um, and we don't get paid for that, by the way. Um, uh, but it's, it's, it's also impossible to ignore how much more effective and efficient this is over mm -hmm. anything else we've seen. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and this is, you said it, that you have a strategy. It goes back to the 2017 Model mm. 3 that we tore down, the board layout was the same on that as well. They've improved their components as technology has increased yeah. uh, to be able to get more range of it, but it's still the same design. Uh, with, with weight mm -hmm. savings mm -hmm. and cost savings and improvements in the effectivity of the, of the board itself. I mean, it's very difficult for me to even think that somebody could throw a rock at Tesla. Anyway, with that, boys and girls, I got one last thing to say. Um, if you're um, a degreed engineer or a non-degreed engineer and you're into costing or you're into um, electrics, electronics, or uh, mechanical, uh, we are accepting um, applications. And something I just found out, I gotta check it out, but if you happen to be a Canadian citizen with a passport um, and a degree for Canadians to come to the United States, you have to have a degree. Um, please submit. We're, uh, we just found out that we can bring you in if you're interested. So again, thanks for tuning in and uh, stay tuned for more on the Tesla Plaid. Thank you. Yeah.